You are listening to Crosstalk. A safe place to discuss addiction, recovery, harm reduction, and everything in between. Support for this podcast comes from the Kentucky Opioid Response Effort and Advocates of Recovery. Content and production by the team at Turning Point Recovery Community Center. Now, buckle up and get ready for the show. Hi, welcome everyone to Crosstalk Recovery, the recovery podcast that supports all forms of recovery. I'm Matt Lewis, and I'm here with... I'm Krista, and I'm Gracie. Welcome, ladies. Uh, I wanted to have you guys on, actually, because Michelle, who uh, I guess, you know, Krista, you went through treatment with, uh, said you guys were doing a podcast, and I'm always looking for new people to have on. And so I checked it out, and I thought it was really cool what you guys were doing. For one, like, we're a young, I'm a young, I host this young podcast as well. And I thought it was cool that, you know, Krista, you are someone who's in recovery, and Gracie, you are not. And you guys bring, like, two aspects to it, you know, like the the recovery aspect and then the family side, you know, what the friends and the family have been dealing with through your uh, recovery. I think that's really cool. Uh, and I love how you guys are so open and honest. Like I've been watching a few episodes and you guys are just, you know, highly relatable and talking about the struggles that you go through and moments of becoming complacent and things like that. And that's what people in recovery need to hear. You know, it's not always unicorns and rainbows, you know, but you can still, you don't have to use over it. You know, that's the the great thing about it. So I wanted to have you guys on to kind of tell your story about your friendship, uh, about your pathway through recovery and uh, why you started the podcast and what you guys are doing now. So go ahead. Let's hear about it. Okay. So um, I was like 15 when she was born and um, had not started using substances. Um, A few years later, um, is where my journey of addiction began and, and she, we're not related, but, um, Gracie's named after me. We have a podcast K squared where both of our real names are Krista. So that's kind of where okay. that comes from. Um, she's seen it all like from the first time I started using through jails, institutions, like mental health crisis, uh, and, and never left my side. Um, she, you know, like I was, I was like a big sister role model to her. And like at an early age, like I, I was doing good things with my life. Um, I had like a full ride basketball scholarship. I, oh, wow. I was someone that she could be proud of. And then it, uh, my life took a drastic turn. Like, um, after a knee surgery and an unhealthy relationship, I just like went full force into full blown, hard drugs, um, just being involved in the criminal justice system. And she's, she's seen it all. I can, she can share a little bit about, you know, like her side to it, but yeah, yeah, I kind of, uh, grew up, uh, with Krista watching her as I was growing, she was going through her addiction. So it was very, um, it was a good learning experience for me, honestly, to grow up and see this. And I think it helped stray me away from different decisions in my life. And, um, it was really, it was hard. It was hard to watch her, you know, somebody that who was so important in my life from a young age and then to see her, you know, fall and be there for her while I was trying to grow myself. It was hard to handle from a young age for sure. Yeah, I bet. And like, yeah. And another thing, like just having to be, there was, you know, several times in my adult life and in her childhood where I was sent off to long-term treatment or, you know, being in jail for a few months, like she didn't understand what was going on. Um, and she, she remembers that like quite vividly. So like we started this podcast, Gracie had initially like came to me cause I do not like, like I'm not tech, um, tech savvy whatsoever. Like in my addiction, I like veered from technology, if you know what I mean. Um, and just, uh, I don't know, being really vulnerable. I know whenever I was like, like I said, I went through like a mental health crisis and in the, you know, like in the prime of my addiction, like I would get online and like that stuff kept me alive. Like seeing other people like share their stories and um, locally, like people wasn't, they, they, there's still a huge stigma, you know? Um, And it's, it's, it's improving, you know, as you can probably tell by just like how outspoken people are being, but uh we just decided to like bring both parts, you know, to the table because she like this last group that I went on was just we I took them on for a ride, you know, and um and just not giving up on your family members because like 
you know, in just a short time, how things have improved on this end of it. Like, we just want someone that's struggling to be able to like pull this up and be like, okay, you know, they went through some crazy stuff and they're, they're living and not getting high. So. And the same from the family aspect as well. We want people to be able to see it and say, you don't have to give up on them. There's, you can set your boundaries and you can step out on some aspects, but you still have to be there for them and can't just give up on them. It's not that easy. Yeah. It's important to have support and some people lose that or hurt their family so bad that they, they aren't there for them and they have to really work in their early recovery to build back those relationships and that trust. That's kind of what happened with me. And, you know, I had uh, of a son who's 22 now, but he watched me through my entire addiction and, you know, I was really selfish with it and like didn't shelter him from anything and the only good thing that came out of it that he wanted to be nothing like me and stayed sober um you know which hurt back then but now I realize like that was the best thing that could have happened for it but I know that like you know it, it was a struggle to like earn back their trust the trust of my parents the trust of other friends that I had you know we we lie we cheat we steal we manipulate um and there's a lot of damage that comes behind that. But the healing is uh, is there if you do the work, you know. That's a, that's a great thing about it. There's so many success stories. And I, I like how you talked about, you know, there is more, there is that stigma that still exists, but there's more things going on with Recover Out Loud and, you know, not being ashamed of what you've been through and being able to speak out about it and celebrities doing it. And, and everybody's trying to let it be known that, you know, these things are real, but you can recover from them and there is help and there's support and it's an amazing thing to see. You know, there's not that whole like anonymity is, I think, important in certain aspects, but it's also important to let people know what's possible and that you can come out the other side of this thing and and form a life for yourself. So uh, what are you guys um, like? I know you work in recovery now, right, Krista? And you're yeah. going... And Gracie, you're going to school to be a nurse. I right? am, yeah. So, where do you tell me about working in recovery and and what you enjoy about that? So, I work in a facility that is it's a men's facility, which uh, also was different. I've always worked with women in in the past, and uh, so it, it was different having to learn to set boundaries and like. Um, and being able to have like a strong voice with men who have done done time and um, they ain't trying to hear right. anything that I'm saying, you know, at first. And, it, you know, but then when they realize that, you know, I feel like that I that I'm very humble and I share these same stories with them that um, that I've been through, they they kind of can see that, I, you know, I'm them. And um, I don't know it. I love it. I mean, it, I am able to like separate working in recovery rather than having like, um, my own personal recovery outside of there. Yeah. I know, um, years ago, whenever I, I worked in a women's facility, um, I did not separate those two things. Like, um, my personal recovery was work and, um, I ended up relapsing after that because I, I, I didn't know what you had to do to like keep those things separate. So, um, I still work a program outside of there and um, it's just, you know, I was working in a factory for a couple years early on in recovery. And I remember just like, I was real grateful for that job, you know, but I would sit around and be like, this cannot be it. You know, I didn't feel like I was living with any kind of purpose. I knew what I needed to be doing, like helping other people. And, um, and that, in that aspect, like works, not work, you know, um, I'm learning a lot uh, and I, and I get to help people every day. So and uh, recently we were talking, Gracie, Gracie's in school right now to be a nurse. And she is like seeing, seeing how her personal experiences in, with, with me and uh, learning about addiction is, is giving her a benefit with like working in the health, health field. Sure. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't plan on working in recovery as of now, but I mean, any aspect of nursing or the medical field you work in, you obviously work with addicts no matter what field you're in. So yeah. um, I have noticed from my personal experience, I'm grateful that I'm able to be more compassionate towards, you know, addicts and be the one that's an advocate for them and stand up for them because it's not always easy to go and, you know, if you are an addict going into the medical field and, you know, if you have a problem being honest with people and I have noticed that I'm very, I listen to them closely and take their concerns seriously. 
That's really great, and that's a great point. Like we we're doing a lot of work now. We're we're going into the one of the local hospitals and talking to overdose victims, like meeting them right where they're at, you know. And I know that some of the nurses, you know, they deal with it so often they get a little burnout and th- their level of compassion drops. And you probably have a, a leg up in that, having you know experience with Krista and seeing it and knowing that there's you know there's still people, they still deserve your care. They're sick. We'll be right back. You never thought you'd be here. This was not in your plans. You knew it could always happen, but not you, right? If someone told you in the beginning that you'd live in a car, destroy your family, sleep on the street, flatline on a stretcher, or that all the bad company that handed you that first drink, smoke, pill, or needle would be nowhere to be found today, you would have said, no way. But here you are, an addiction to everything. What now? Well, you weren't the only one, and it doesn't have to end here. You just have to reach out for help. There is a life on the other side of an addiction crisis. At Turning Point Recovery Center, we're here with the resources you need to start that new beginning. Hey y'all, did you know it's illegal to own just one guinea pig in Switzerland because they get lonely? Here at Turning Point, we don't want you to ever be lonely either. That's why we are open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Always feel free to come hang with our friendly staff and don't forget your guinea pig. We're located at 415 Broadway Street, downtown Paducah. As a woman in recovery, I know how important having a fellowship of women has been for me. Come join us at the Women of Worth All Recovery Support Group here at Turning Point, 415 Broadway, Paducah, Kentucky, every Friday night at 6 p.m., where we discuss our personal experiences in recovery. Hope to see you there. And, uh, yeah, I think... uh Chris, it's interesting that you work at a treatment center where it's all men because that's where I met Michelle. She was working there when I was going through treatment. And, uh, yeah. you know, she was really good at holding everyone accountable. Nobody <laughs> nobody really liked her. But uh, now we're good friends. <laughs> we <laughs> we work together now outside where, here at Turning Point. And uh, we're good friends. I give her a hard time all the time, but she was definitely the one when when they say don't mess with staff. She was she was staff. Uh, yeah, so I got plenty of words off of her back then. Um, yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I tried to get her to come on and do this with me today, but she had something else going on. So summer. Yeah. So, so yeah. another thing we sorry go, go ahead. ahead. No, you. Uh, just another thing with Gracie. Also, like you know. Um, I've told her like the dark side of addiction. Like when she's working, I'm like, girl, you can, I've told her ways you can pass drug screens and like, you know what I mean? Like she's not naive at all when it comes to like, I've, she has seen me do everything. So it's like gave her the benefit of being able to see like straight through BS. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is good. Cause I'm able to help people then, you know, I mean, if they're not honest, you got to still help them and you want to help them to the best of your ability and offer them the support that they need, whether they're ready for it or not. And so I'm grateful that I am able to realize those, the actions and the characteristics to help people. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a huge leg up. I mean, that's like, uh, like Krista and I myself who are recovering addicts and working in recovery, we have the advantage of being able to see when someone's manipulating. We know all the maneuvers and for you to also have that advantage without having to go through the <laughs> yeah. addiction to get it is, is great. Um, but you know, I do. I remember there, you, there was a, one of your episodes recently where Krista, you were talking about a story with, uh, where you like, jumped out of a car and we're like walking down the road and uh, like called the, told the fire department to call the cops on you so you could go to yeah. treatment. I mean, that was powerful stuff, man. Cause I know a lot of us have been at that, that point, you know, uh, desperate. Tell us a little bit about that story and where you were at at that point. Uh, I was in a, I was in a really unhealthy environment at that time, like a, um, in a really abusive relationship. And, um, 
and I and I didn't know how to get out. You know, I, looking back, that's what was going on. Like I was just isolated from every. Like I had isolated myself, and um, you know, I was in a situation. I I was you know fed up. I'd had it, and I was like, I'm walking to my parents' house, and um, uh, and I was dope sick. You know what I mean? So I got not less than a mile down the road, and I'm like, Shit, <laughs> I'm not gonna make it. You know what I mean? So I'm a FedEx driver and drives by, and I'm just like, hey. I need you to call the police. Like, who does that? Uh, knowing I'm on like active probation, like, um, but that's just where I was at. I was desperate, and so I just remember them showing up. Uh, my job had been up for days, so I didn't, you know, I don't know where I was going with it, but I ended up and ended up working out, just like it always seemed to just work out. Um, but they showed up, and I'm like, what do you need help with? <laughs> you know, I didn't have an answer. I don't know. I'm losing it, dude, and. um, I ended up, my family hadn't seen me in, in a while and they showed up and I mean, just the look on their faces, I'll never forget just, you know, heartbroken just to see me like 90 pounds soaking wet, just, I mean, walking the street, like that's not how I was raised, you know? Uh, yeah. So they took me straight to the ER and I was on suicide watch for, for, for a little bit, but I woke up in like a paper suit and I'm like, you know, like reality set in, like, what have I done? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people have been there. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, to, to come from that point to where you are today, I like that you're talking about you were working in a factory. I know that I used to work in a factory and I was miserable when I was working in a factory and I was in addiction. I was taking a half gallon of vodka with me to work and I was doing dope in the bathroom all the, all through the whole shift. And like, I was miserable. Uh, you know, nothing was worse to me. It was a appliance park where I was like just a screw in a refrigerator, basically. And I felt like my life had no purpose. Um, and I could never go back to do that again because I would be miserable. And if I'm, that's one thing that I'm really adamant about in my recovery. Like if I'm going to be miserable, then I, I know how to not be miserable, at least temporarily. And I'm not going to get to that point. So I just try to stay as positive and have purpose in my life, which I've found in being able to try to help other people. Uh, and like this podcast for me is part of my job, but I'm lucky that it is because I enjoy it. And I love being able to get the message out there like this and meet other people like you guys who are trying to do the same thing. Um, so I totally get that. It's, it's, it's so important uh, to be able to find something that you have a passion for, you know, like being able to help people. Um, Gracie, what was one of the, you think, the hardest points growing up that you had to watch her go through? Um, I would say the last time her last rip through was pretty rough because I think for most of uh, her addiction, I was sheltered from a lot of it because I was so young and there was a divide between our families because I mean, we our families were always close and there was a divide between our families and there was always, I think, the question of do they tell me things or do they hide it, you know, and so this last time I was older, I was probably 17, 18. And so I was right by her side through it all. Honestly, like if she needed something, I she would call me and it, it was just hard. I think, um, I'll, just honestly waking up every day, wondering if she was alive, you know, because there were so many days where I wouldn't hear from her for days. And I mean, I knew, I think I knew before anybody, the reality of it, you know, she was using again and, um, it was hard to, maybe have to accept at a young age, somebody that's so important in my life. And that is such a big part of my life that she might be gone at any point. Um, and it was hard. That was really hard. And it was hard when there were times, I think I was middleman sometimes and would have to try to like find where she was or try to get a hold of her. And that was, it was just a lot of weight on my shoulders at such a young age and just watching her know who she is and know her full potential and just see how sad she was. And it was, it was really hard. I bet. I bet. And, didn't, and like, no one should have to go through that and see someone that they care about struggle that way. Um, and it's really sad, but I mean, to be on this side of it now, like, and both of you being in fields where you're trying to help other people, you know, it's amazing. You know, it's uh you know, it's only by the grace of God things like that could happen that people can be completely changed. Um, I know that's that's what it was for me. Um, so, <clears throat> so you uh, it's so I, sorry, I cut off. <laughs> it's so weird because like um, 
just the way that like our relationship started and how I met like her parents and stuff, like how like spiritually connected the two of us are. There were times like in addiction where I would just be on full fledged and then something would hit me like I need to get a hold of her. And then, I mean, she went through the same thing. Some of the things in our lives that have happened that have like, there are times that Gracie would, uh, we've shared on our, on our podcast about like um, one night I, you know, was on a mission that I was going to end my life that night. And she said, she's sitting at home just like, and had this like overwhelming feeling to like drive into town. And then, I mean, our, our, uh, our paths cross and she's like, comes down the, and I'm in the middle of like in the country, you know what I mean? And she she drives by me, you know what I mean? Just things like that that have happened. Um, and we're still like that, you know, there'll be life will get busy and, I'll be sitting at home, something will hit me, like, you need to check on her, and she'll be going through some, like, major stuff. So it's just, you know, like, we're really spiritually motivated. Um, things we can look back on and see that, like, you know, my higher power is God. So, like, God God just working in our life and, you know, like, heavy stuff, I feel like, was meant to happen for us to, to be where we're at, you know? Yeah. Is, is it odd or is it God? I mean, right, totally right. Get that. And uh, like uh, one of your episodes that you, you uh, were talking about earlier, which I think I kind of brought up, was uh, that you had gotten to a point where you guys hadn't been communicating for a little while, and uh, you know somebody had come back in your life, and you had gotten kind of complacent. And I was like really encouraged by the fact that you know that's real. That's like that stuff happens, and for you to then recognize it and be able. to the willingness to be able to address it, you know, is huge. You know, talk about uh, where you were at at that point and what brought you to the realization that you needed to get back to the basics. So I was just reverting back to, like, that same old, um, I I tend to think that I can, like, fix people. It's codependency, and that's what it boils down to. Um, thinking I can revisit relationships that obviously had or detrimental to my mental health. Um, just always thinking I can see the good in people, you know? Um, and I, and I don't think that that's a bad thing necessarily. Um, but I know now that I said, you know, I, I closed down relationships in my life for a reason. And, um, so it was just, let, let me just be real frank. Like I, I went back to a relationship that I had went in. We were both, you know, off substances, but, I, I'm the one that like is working a program, you know what I mean? And so there, there's a fine line between that. Um, none of the behaviors had changed. So um, I felt myself like mentally going backwards. So like through all the trial and error in my life of like relapsing and sober, relapse, sober, like I knew where I was headed. So I just was, and Gracie's saying constantly, like, well, what are you doing? Like you, you done yet? Like yeah. you had enough? <laughs> Yeah, that's such an important thing. Like, it's a good thing to have a big heart and try to help people and be an encouragement and be there for people, but we have to set those healthy boundaries and be able to realize, like, when someone's not on the same page as us or when we're putting our own recovery at risk, you know. um, that's I've dealt with the same thing. you got to be – got to have those boundaries. You know, we talk about them all the time. um, But it's a big part of this. Yeah. Yeah. um, is the pig there? <laughs> She's downstairs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I love about your guys' podcast is you guys just have a lot of fun and it's just what's going on with you guys and you just keep it open and honest and uh, it's really cool, man. So that's why I wanted to have you on to kind of get your word about your podcast out there and maybe I'll benefit from some of your listeners and, you know, Absolutely. We, we try to help people. So no. I really appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, stay in touch. Maybe we can come down here and do an in studio sometime in the future. Uh, that would be yeah, great. Yeah, no, for sure. We would love that. Yeah. Day, you know, we would love that. It's just been busy this time of year, but yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. We would love that. Awesome. Awesome. All right, ladies, take care of yourself. Appreciate you coming on. Okay. Thank you for having us. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, ladies. Uh, listen to our audio version on Apple, Google, Spotify, Podbean, or Amazon Music. Check us out on YouTube and uh, check out their podcast, K Squared. Uh, you can find it through Facebook. It's on YouTube. Um, it's really good. And as always, stay grateful. 
If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction or in recovery and needs guidance, speak with Turning Point's team of peer support specialists by calling 270-444-3621. You are not alone, and we are proof that recovery is possible.